All right, welcome back to the next episode in our series about uh, licenses and copyrights. And today we'll do a short um, rundown of uh, how to choose a license and, and what license to choose. Um, so there are like some things to consider. First of all, is it code at all? Uh, what type of license do you want uh, from an like ideological or practical perspective? Uh, do you care about patents or not? And various legal aspects that might uh, arise from your company or workplace or something else. Um, so, I mean, in this, in this series, we only talk about licenses for software. And um, there's a good point to be made here is that these licenses we talk about, they are specifically written to cover software. So if the stuff you're looking for a license for is not software, then you, usually you should not use uh, a software license. Uh, it can work anyway, but uh, there are other licenses specifically written for things that are not software. Like comics and books and stuff like that. Yeah, documentation. And, uh, exactly. And uh, for example, GNU has this uh, free documentation license, which... Uh, they encourage to use for documentation, which is you know separate from the software, but usually bundled with the software. I mean, we discussed that in our GNU episode, and it's even incompatible with the GPL, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, but then you usually don't you know link your <laughs> your uh, documentation with the code. But yeah. but what Still. about the, all the inline documentation which you have like in Java Doc and so on? Yeah, exactly. I mean that's. I don't know really what the what the legal status would be there. But but GNU does doesn't have that much Java code, so it's not a big problem. Oh, okay. <laughs> what about would, Doc, Doxygen then? <laughs> it would be funny to to separately license all the comments in the code. Yeah. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> exactly. no! 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 <laughs> that would probably work, but okay, never mind. So. Um, uh, the Creative Commons project is uh, available for things that are like general creative works, like uh, art and uh, I don't know, music, probably, photos. Yeah, nice. yeah, and photos as well. So that can be a good place to look if you if if it's not code that you want to license. Uh, the next thing is like, what type of license style are you interested in? And we've talked about copyleft and permissive licenses, but this is just a short recap. So. A permissive license will allow uh, the users of your software or whoever gets it to relicense it if they choose to um, redistribute it, for example. Um, they can make proprietary derived works from the software and a permissive license allows code to flow in any direction. So you can, you can use uh, uh, any type of code in your permissive code. Well, this this might sound weird. You can't use uh, copylefted code in permissive code, of course, because you're not allowed to change the license of that. But otherwise, uh, the other direction is, is fine. And if if you want a copyleft license, that means the user can't relicense the code. So it will, I mean, the, the point of that is that the code will stay open. Uh, you have to share a like. Uh, so you have to keep the same license or a compatible license when you dis redistribute. Hmm. Um, and then there is a, a special case of this called when you have the weak copyleft, which I don't know if we have a, <laughs> a, a good definition of it, but usually it implies that the, the original code that you got has to stay, stay copylefted. But if you make uh, derived works or uh, edits to the code, then your edits or derivations may, be, uh, may have a different license. About this can't relicense, uh, that only means what I'm not quite sure if uh, how this is uh, working because you can, for example, relicense it from uh, GPL v2 to GPL v3 if if it's allowed by the license. Uh, yeah, it, yeah if, it's, if it's allowed by the license, but uh, I mean, in general, you can't change the license to something else. Uh, this uh, GPL two to three thing is a special clause in the GPL v two. Okay, and three. Oh yeah, it's probably in three, but three is the latest right now, so nobody thinks yeah. about that. <laughs> yes. 
All right. Uh, so once you've selected a license style, then there is uh, some more things to, to consider. It's patents. And uh, the big question is, do you even care about patents? And if you listen to the talk we did about, about patents uh, earlier, the, easy, the easiest answer is you should. Um, patents may uh, come at you from nowhere, and you're just supposed to keep track of them yourself. Um, so a good way to make sure you don't end up in trouble with, uh, when it comes to patents is to, um, to use a license that uh, allows, uh, a li that, that automatically licenses for any patents that, that you have or that uh, the contributor has. And I mean, if you're more interested in that, then you can listen to, to that whole episode, which is uh, only about that. But there's a fourth thing that um, I sort of realized late while, while preparing for this is that there are, you know, like legal aspects. If you work at a company, for example, there might be a policy in place on, uh, on what license to use uh, that uh, some lawyer has, has just decided, uh, some company lawyer, for example. Yeah, and this depends a bit on where you're working in which country. For, for instance, how does contributions that you do in your free time Indeed. Uh, how, how are they influenced by your employer? Exactly. And I mean, um, in Sweden, where, where, where we're at right now, uh, if you're employed by a company and create software, then the copyright is automatically owned by your, uh, your employer, which is, uh, I think, not always the, the case in other countries. Uh, uh, well, um, if you write the software like on behalf of, the, of your employer, yeah, yeah, of course. Not everything you do while employed, but everything you do as part of your job. Yeah, yeah. So, so even if I think we've touched upon this before, so we but we might do it again. If you're like writing your secret JavaScript stuff or whatever you do, and you're an embedded programmer writing C code uh, at work, the JavaScript co code you write, even though you're writing it on paid time on a computer paid by the company using the uh, company's internet it still belongs to you mm. and i think once you once you have uh, got it down to that your stuff is code and uh, you know what type of license uh, you want and this patent stuff i mean um, this this clause about legal aspects of course that can <laughs> there will be a flow chart shown here uh, so, uh, and the whole legal aspects, if your company doesn't allow you to open source stuff or release it as free software, then this is all for nothing. But uh, it might be a good thing to check, check that out uh, early. So here is the, uh, the, you know, the big kahuna, what to choose. And uh, I've sort of uh, written some recommendations here based on uh, uh, licenses that are reasonable and modern and uh, cover what you want based on, on these choices. So if you want a permissive license, then you could go for the Apache license too. It's a permissive license and it also covers patents. Do you guys agree? I'm just thinking that we might get some BSD folks coming at us. At yeah, and I mean, from, from what we discussed when it comes to patents, that's, uh, you, you may have uh, an automatic sort of because it's not mentioned in the license right but it's not explicit and in the apache license it is explicit mm. uh, which is i think uh, a positive thing here so, so i mean the flow chart ends up in modern licenses in in the respective categories so yes if you look at permission if you have the mit you have the the bsd and so on and, and the problem as you say is that they don't clearly state everything uh, Apache is still permissive, but it, it provides more clarity. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, I would say the same about, for instance, the, the, the strong copyleft branch that you have in the, in the other side. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, uh, the GPL v3 is the most modern one, but uh, for instance, the Linux kernel stays with GPL v2 because they don't agree with some of the changes that were made in between version two and version three. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, GPL v2 is still a strong copyleft license, and for uh, for the purposes uh, of you know uh, having a good license, it works. Uh, it doesn't have a, a patent thing, um, a patent clause. For Linux, I think that's not as big of a problem because we have this um, what is it called? This patent pool. The the open innovation. 
thing. Yep. Exactly. Um, so, so if it's just for Linux, then you're not likely to get sued by anyone. I, I think the biggest difference of opinion between uh, Linux and Free Software Foundation was the, the digital restrictions management. Um, it, oh, yeah. it, that was allowed or not. Something we discussed in the Intertibalization episode. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and then, uh, the, of course, the third leg here is if you want a, a weak copyleft license, then you can use either the Mozilla public license or the GNU LGPL uh, version 3, which both are weak copyleft license with uh, patent clauses in them. Yeah, so, I mean, this sort of opens up for a big flame war uh, for everyone who <laughs> doesn't agree. Uh, but, you know, it's... Um, if you just if you're just looking for some simple uh, simple answers and you trust that I did my homework, then this is good. Uh, otherwise, you can check these links out from some pages. For example, GitHub has uh, I don't know if they host it, but they recommend it uh, a site for for choosing a license. And I know that Free Software Foundation has some kind of list of recommendations as well that you can check out uh, if you don't trust the opinion that I that, I, that I'm giving here. <laughs> And obviously, uh, go back to all the videos we did and uh, listen again to, to the different licenses, what they, what they uh, do, and decide for yourself. That would be the absolute best. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, these chosen licenses are based on what we have talked about before. So I think that's all for the short and simple uh, what to choose type uh, discussion, right? Awesome. Let's fight it out in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.